Welcome back, it's your boy B the Critical. Sit down for no time. It's about to get back into another reaction video. Sit down. It's time to laugh. We're about to do Fluffy visit Saudi Arabia. Oh, I can't wait to laugh. Fluffy, could you please talk to me, brother? When you do, I need you to talk to me lightly. My agent calls me up and he says, Gabe, check it out. You're getting a request to perform in the Middle East. I go, really? Okay, cool. Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, who? Actually, the request is coming from a prince. Run that by me again. A prince. I said, purple rain? <laughs> Not prince. A prince. <laughs> I said, how do they know me? I, I, I don't know, but they say that they know you and they want to hire you. I go, it sounds like a joke, Matt. Trust me, it sounds legit. All right. If it's legit, I'll tell you what. Give whoever a ridiculous figure and let them know that they have to wire the money today. Otherwise, forget it. <laughs> Four hours later. Gabe, what? Ridiculous just called. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm looking at the screen, bro. They wired all of it. Next thing I know. <laughs> Welcome aboard Saudi Arabian Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen hour flight, you guys, from Detroit, Michigan to Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And just so you guys know, I didn't go by myself, okay? I took some friends with me. Nobody from this show. <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, man, you see the crew that I travel with? Everybody's hairy, big nose, goatee, beard, crazy eyes, this. Are you kidding me? With the, all of us, we're like Osama bin Lopez. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know what the hell we are. <laughs> so I took two other friends. I took one friend. His name is Edwin San Juan, who's Filipino, works clean. <laughs> hell yeah. And another buddy of mine named Larry Omaha, who's Native American, who also works clean. And... Uh, all right, so hell yeah, sure. <laughs> Hold on, I want to look at the camera. Hey, Larry Omaha, Edwin San Juan, you guys have fans and they're here in Hawaii. Get your asses over here. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we head to Riyadh, 17 hour flight from Detroit. As soon as we get there, they flew us their first class, by the way. It was really nice. And the plane is pulling up to the gate, and you know, it's doing the whole, you know, and the tube is coming out to meet the plane. As soon as the tube touches the plane, all of a sudden, the door on the opposite side of the plane, pops open and a man in a suit gets on and he walks over to the three of us and he does this. <laughs> and I'm sitting there freaking out like, oh my God, this is like the movies. <laughs> and they pulled us off the plane and they escorted us to this area called VIP baggage claim. And it sounds kind of crazy, VIP, and I get there and I realize, oh, they're, they're serving cookies and candy and coffee and there's leather sofas and it's really nice. And there's Nothing but Middle Eastern businessmen there, okay? And they're all talking about me. I don't understand Arabic, but everyone in this room understands when someone's talking about you. The guy's <laughs> looking at me and he's like, I'm sorry, but this is universal. <laughs> and apparently this is Arabic for damn! <laughs> <laughs> so then this other guy walks over to me and he's holding a sign and the sign has my name on it and he's really excited he's like it is you come 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 it is you come 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 we go and I'm like, oh, okay cool so we grab our luggage and we follow him outside to the curb they have three lincoln navigator suvs waiting for us there's three comedians and there's three cars we're so paranoid that we're in the middle east we all get in one car <laughs> we're sitting in there. <laughs> and we take off. We're heading towards downtown Riyadh, okay? Now, all I know up to this point about my experience is that I've already been paid, my flight's been taken care of, and I have a point person who I'm supposed to meet at the airport who's not there. So I'm talking to the driver. I said, excuse me, sir, where's, where's, where's this guy? It is okay. Hey, take it to him. He's, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Uh, okay, and for me, it's not okay because I researched Saudi Arabia and you know, you think the rules in Singapore are strict <laughs> The rules in Saudi Arabia are very very different Okay, and I don't want to offend anyone and I want to make sure that I don't say the wrong thing So I need to know, you know some some I need some info So I keep talking to the driver. So, um, 
Sir, would you mind helping me with some questions? Whatever you need. You ask, I tell you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, I apologize in advance if I come across rude or disrespectful or ignorant, but um, how do you guys know about me here in the Middle East? What do you mean, how do we know? Yeah, how do you know that I'm a comedian? Do you have Comedy Central or HBO or Showtime? What is that? That's a no. That's what that is. That's a no. Um, <laughs> how do you know that I'm an entertainer? Oh, your videos. YouTube. My friend, YouTube, you're huge. You're the number two most famous comedian in all of the Middle East. Number two. You're kidding. I am not comedian. I don't kid. <laughs> I just like Fluffy's, uh, the way that he tells a story, dog. How he plays out each character and then the sound effects. Fluffy 101. Oh. I'm the number two most famous comedian in all of the Middle East. Yes! Who's number one? I knew he was going to ask. Jeff Dunham. Oh, I did Jeff. The, uh, that's my uh, ventriloquist. <laughs> Jeff Dunham is the number one comedian in the Middle East. You guys don't find him at all offensive? <gasps> no. <laughs> I kill you. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> when I heard that, you guys, I was like, you know what? They get it. They get it. So I'm like, we're cool. We're sitting, we're driving, we're heading towards downtown. All of a sudden the driver cuts the wheel really hard and we get off the freeway and now we're taking a side road going away from the city. And I'm like, um, excuse me, where are we going? We're going to this show. I go, um, it says here that we're staying in the city. Yes, you're staying in the city, but the show is somewhere else. That doesn't make sense. Why would you have the show somewhere else? How come you don't have it in the city? And then he broke it down. My friend. Here in Riyadh, it is very different, okay? Uh, your type of entertainment is forbidden in the city. There are people called religious police that hold up the uh, traditions. They keep it so that it's very traditional. It is not allowed. The social gathering is a no-no. Okay, okay, okay. We must go somewhere secret in the desert. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Bro, what? <laughs> uh, all right. Um... So how many people are you guys expecting in, at the show? Easily between seven to 800 people. That many? I told you, number two. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, you guys, we pull up to this racetrack in the middle of the desert, and there's a, there's a giant tent set up next to it, and there's, there's 800 people, roughly, there for a comedy show. And as soon as we pull up, as soon as we pull up, <laughs> radios start popping out. Just like, <laughs> And I keep hearing on all the radios, fluffy, 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 fluffy. All of a sudden, some guy runs up on the stage and they hand him a microphone and he starts yelling to the crowd. I don't know what he's saying, but I've seen enough hip hop to recognize a hype man. Oh, yeah, he's out there. And then I get the biggest introduction of my life. And now, direct from the United States of America, here he is, Gabriel Iglesias. And the crowd starts going, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. And when I heard that, I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be an amazing show. So I ran to the stage as fast as I could. <laughs> I'm not a runner. Clearly. <laughs> I booked it to the stage, you guys, because I was so excited. And when I got to the front, it clicked that in Saudi Arabia, they still have segregation. And I didn't find out till the last second because I saw a line going down the middle. And on one side, men. Other side, women. And all the women in the front row were covered from head to toe. All I saw was this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I had no idea I was performing for Assassin's Creed. I didn't know that. <laughs> Shout out to Assassin's Creed. That's a dope game growing up. It probably still it is. I ain't played in a while. so bad. <laughs> and I, hey, what's going on, everybody? How you <laughs> I froze. 
I've been doing this for 15 years. I don't freeze, but that threw me off so bad. I didn't know what to say. All of a sudden, men start yelling my jokes at me. My friend, do the donkey, do the donkey. Hey, chocolate cake, chocolate cake. <laughs> Guy in the front, make fun of me. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> And the people started laughing. The women were laughing just as hard as the men. You know, granted, some of them I couldn't see, but for the most part, it's like, <laughs> and they're not trying to be disrespectful. You know, but they're, laughing, they're moving and laughing. I even had fun with one of the girls. I said, oh, I saw your neck. And she said, You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> the Saudis had such an amazing sense of humor. They were laughing and carrying on, and I had no idea they were going to be like that. And then after the show, I got a chance to meet some of the locals. And one guy was almost in tears. He was so emotional. He walks up to me and he's just like, <laughs> I cannot believe that I am standing here in front of you, Mr. Fluffy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Please, please, when you return to United States or wherever you travel, let the people know what you saw, okay? Let them know that we are not all bad, that we are not all those bad people from Fox News, okay? <laughs> you let them know, because we see Fox News, and Fox News believes that everybody in Middle East is bad. Everybody's terrorist. Everybody has a bomb. He has a bomb. He has a bomb. He has a bomb. Oprah is here giving away bombs to everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you let them know. We are not all bad people, okay? We are not all terrorists. My cousin. Maybe. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Look at your face. Look at your face. Oh, I'm going to die. Look at you. <laughs> A plane. What plane? I got you again. Two for two, I got you. He is raising my blood pressure every seven seconds. And then he starts breaking it down for me how stand-up comedy is starting to bring people together Straight in the Middle up. East. And how he's starting to do, you know, he's doing comedy. It's, it was crazy, the conversation. You know, here in, the, in Saudi Arabia, um, uh, people, they, they like watching the, the stand-up comedy because uh, we love to laugh. Okay, we love to laugh. It's great to laugh. And uh, people don't think that uh, people in Middle East have sense of humor. They, they see videos, they see TV, they think we are the same. They say, oh, in Middle Eastern people are all angry. Look at their face, they're angry. Everybody angry, everybody mad, everybody angry. My friend, we're not angry. It's hot. <laughs> right okay? Up. It's 117 degrees. Everybody is not mad, they're hot. Look at everybody has a hot face. Hot face. Everybody hot face. I promise you give me air conditioning. I am so happy. <laughs> we are okay. We love to laugh. I've been doing the stand-up comedy for about six months now and um, I have jokes. Good for you. May I try? Oh, great. <laughs> All right, man, go ahead. Okay, very nervous, very nervous. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Two Jews walk into a bar. Not in my country. <laughs> Man, you're gonna get my ass arrested, bro. <laughs> we wound up doing shows all over the Middle East. We were in uh, Riyadh, Bahrain, Dubai, Qatar, Doha, and each show, you guys, was more amazing than the last show. Not because there were so many people, but because the people were friendly. They were fun. They got all the references. I couldn't get over that. I honestly thought that they were gonna be like the people from Fox News. <laughs> and I felt terrible. I felt terrible because I was judging them. I was prejudging them and I thought that they were gonna be a certain way and I felt bad because all those years people were doing that to me, not really giving me a chance and I was over there doing the same thing. I felt so bad. And then when I met the prince, I was still judging, 19 years old, and he's a prince. I thought he was gonna be a brat. He walks up to me and I was already like, what's up? <laughs> I failed to realize that he's a prince and he was brought up to be a prince. Thanks. The way he carried himself, he intimidated me in about 18 seconds. Okay, I'm 36. <laughs> and I'm, you know, what's up? And he's like, Jibril. Excuse me? Jibril. Jibril? Gabriel. 
I understand that your name is Gabriel, but in the Arabic language, your name is Jibril. I was welcoming you in our language. Oh! <laughs> I'm a dick! <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> and I started already imagining what was going to happen. <laughs> ah, Jibril! <laughs> Jibril! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And he was so nice, you guys. He's like, I want to thank you for coming here to Riyadh and doing all of these shows. It was so beautiful to see everyone having such an amazing time, from the little children in attendance all the way to the elderly people with a cane. Everyone had an amazing time. Everyone. It was beautiful. Okay? Beautiful. Religious people laughing. Religious police laughing. <laughs> they don't laugh at shit. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to understand how big this is. There was an American here entertaining people from Middle East. There was no violence, no bloodshed, no problems. Everybody was smiling. Everybody was getting along. It is possible. An American was here. An American was here. He kept saying American, American, American. Freaking 10 years being called a Latino comic. I had to go all the way around the world to finally get called American. Straight up. Real. Straight up. No, I was no, excited. Dog. I was like, it's, say it's it again, American. Ah! <laughs> and then I had the most surreal conversation I have ever had with the person. He looks at me and he says, I want to thank you for everything. I want to invite you and your friends to come to my palace so that I may entertain you. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I am not getting invited to a palace by a prince. Oh my God, up until this point, my only experience with royalty was a Burger King drive through <laughs> All of a sudden, one of those SUVs pulls up. And a guy jumps out in a suit. And I guess his favorite word was please, because that's all he said. Please. 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 I'm like, are you kidding me? There's a man in a suit trying to get me in the back of a Lincoln Navigator, and there's a prince inviting me to his palace. I'm not going to lie. I felt like a hot chick. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, my God, let's go. <laughs> Hurry up, bitch, let's go. <laughs> we get to the front of his palace, you guys. I'm not going to lie. It didn't look like a palace. The walls are really high. There's barbed wire around the entire property and there's two guys in the front with machine guns. I'm looking at this and I'm like, this doesn't look like a palace. <laughs> and I started thinking, what if I'm on some messed up episode of Middle Eastern punt? You know what I mean? Like, you thought you go to palace, you go to prison, you're punt! You're <laughs> Fortunately, the doors opened up and we drive in and then they closed. And when we got outside, you guys, what we saw was amazing. Outside, desert. Inside, palm trees, bushes, shrubs, a pond, and he had exotic pets. I know exotic pets, because I know what I have. <laughs> Over there. He's got a tiger! <laughs> freaking zebra! Monkeys! And he had a freaking boa constrictor. I'm like, are you kidding me? Snakes, monkeys, a zebra, and a tiger? Oh my God, that makes me Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> and I started thinking, what if he decides to keep me? <laughs> it sounds messed up, but let me explain. As an American, you cannot just purchase an airline ticket to go to Saudi Arabia. You have to be invited by a person of power. You know, when I left Detroit to go over there, I had to fill out a form that says, I understand that I'm going to Saudi Arabia. And should something happen to me, one of those things on the list being kidnapping, conveniently right above death, America is not responsible. The prince could have actually, you're mine. Two weeks later, now he's showing someone else around, right? That is my snake, that is my zebra, that is my Mexican, that is my tiger. <laughs> Inside of some little box, it says Jibril. <laughs> but it never happened. And we're walking around, and I actually pulled him aside for a second. I said, listen, uh, 
I gotta tell you something. Well, you tell me. I, I need to apologize. What did you do? I didn't do anything. I just want to apologize for coming here with the wrong mentality. I says, unfortunately, I thought that uh, just, you know, because it is the Middle East, I thought you guys were going to be rude and everybody's been nothing but nice. Huh? I know. <laughs> I didn't think you guys were going to speak English so well and understand, you know, so many references and you guys get everything. Huh? I know. <laughs> I thought you guys were going to throw rocks, but you were funny. So if I wasn't... <laughs> what? Never mind. <laughs> Two out of three, why <laughs> So we're walking, and uh, he's showing me this and that, and we're just kind of like looking around. I thought it was great, and then I saw something that freaked me out. We're walking in the direction of a giant cage. And when I saw the cage, I stopped. I was like, ah! Uh, what's with the cage? Take a look. Great. <laughs> So I walk over towards the cage and I look inside and I notice that there's birds in there. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, it's a bird cage. And he got all offended, you know. That's not regular birds. Those are falcons. I go, okay, well, you have a lot of falcons. Uh, we'll use the falcons for hunting. You hunt falcons? No, 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 no. Each falcon is very expensive. 100,000 US dollars. They are trained. We go out and we shoot a little animal and we send a falcon to retrieve. Would you like to see? No, 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 no. I got little dogs. I don't want to. <laughs> Bye, Bruno. <laughs> Before I know it, here comes the other guy. Please, please, please. And he goes inside the cage and he puts on this leather glove that comes up to his elbow and he starts getting one of the falcons. I'm watching him do this and I notice all the falcons are on these perches about this high and there's about 15 in a row and they all have hoods covering their eyes. And I asked them, why do they have hoods on their eyes, man? They look like little hostages. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I meant no disrespect by that, man. Seriously. No, no disrespect. I, it was a slip. And he was cool. I understand. Middle East hostage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the other guy comes out and he's got a falcon with him and he's got a glove and he hands me the glove and I put it on and he transfers his falcon to my arm. And uh, all of a sudden he starts doing snapping things and he's basically showing me that the falcon's trained. And I thought that was great. I thought we were gonna kill something. I'm like, no, but we were just playing with the falcon. And I started getting excited, you know? And the more excited I got, the more the prince started showing his age. Cause then he got excited. I'm like, this is great. It is great. Yes, this is so cool. So cool. Oh my God, you're so lucky to have so many falcons. I am so lucky. Would you like a falcon? So matter of fact, like, would you like a cookie? Would you like a falcon? <laughs> Same way. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Don't give me a falcon that can retrieve things. Shoo, you think I'm lazy now? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, don't give me a, no, no, no. I wouldn't even leave the house. I'd be at the front door. <laughs> Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and who the hell is gonna watch my falcon when I'm up here performing? I can't leave it with my buddy Martin in the back. <laughs> Martin. You know he would abuse it, take it to some nightclub, try to hook up with it, freaking here. <laughs> the redhead. <laughs> <laughs> the like button, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Ah, shout out to Fluffy Dog. Fluffy is hilarious. I, if Fluffy ever come to Kansas City, I got to go. I have to. I got to see it. Wow. Dude, too funny, man. Cheeks hurt. Huh. Uh, let me know if there's some other Fluffy reactions, man. Y'all want me to get into? <laughs> it's too many. That Kung Fu Panda, though, bro. Dog. That Kung Fu Panda joke. That took me out, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> the tiger, the bird, the snake, the monkey. That makes me Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> oh, shh. <laughs> oh, my goodness, bro.